Welcome to Fresno State University's Women's Equestrian Competition, where six rival teams challenged Fresno in a selection of English classes from beginning walk, trot, canter to open fences, as well as Western classes, including on the rail and reining. We'll be bringing you action from the competition and take a look behind the scenes at this emerging NCAA sport to learn more about how students become involved with horses here at FSU. Coming into this competition, Fresno was 13 points down behind UC Davis, but a strong start by seniors Michelle Tonello and Amanda Hancock soon put them in the driving seat in the English division. Michelle won the Open Fences class ahead of teammate Dawn McIntosh, a win that she was clearly satisfied with. Well, I was very excited about my win today. It's my last regular I to say show of my career. I've been here for four years. And from this competition, I've learned a lot about how to ride a bunch of different horses and to adjust very quickly, which will help me in my further riding career on the open circuit. As a senior, Michelle is looking forward to moving ahead with the experience she has gained in the equestrian program. Well, I'm probably just going to get on a bunch of different horses at home until I find the right one. And with everything I've learned here, I'm sure I'll find one very quickly. With almost 100 students and over 75 horses, Fresno offers scholarships to students from around the world and is fast becoming a force to be reckoned with at intercollegiate level. Chuck Smallwood brings a wealth of experience to the program and has built a strong team in his first year as head coach. While dedication to any sports activity in school is key to the team's success, Chuck is mindful of the time that students have to spend with the horses. The primary objective here is to get an education and get good grades. So to me, being a student uh, has to absolutely come first because that's what drives their stay here. After that, uh, they do have to spend considerable time here because we put them in what we call a family and uh, they care for a group of horses and uh, they're out there at the barn uh, a lot doing that. Unlike most equestrian competitions, riders draw the horse they will ride in each class just before the class and they don't get to even meet their mount until they prepare to enter the arena. For experienced riders, the luck of the draw plays a large part and for some these are tense moments as they prepare for competition. We try to keep them uh, on an even footing. We try not to go and and bring in a star and then have a horse that's of uh, just uh, a low quality that just barely makes it around the course or isn't uh, uh, responsive enough to, to be an upper level horse for the upper level riders. We try to keep them pretty even. So we bring pretty much medium horses or as uh, high a quality as we can without having um, a star show up and, and uh, uh, make the judge have to deal with uh, overlooking what the horse is doing and seeing what the rider is doing. So we look at them during the week. Uh, we try to make sure that uh, all the horses uh, get in and, and go around the courses or get in the venue where we're showing and make sure they're all happy with it. Um, they sort of sort themselves out with either injuries or um, not dealing with the uh, area that we're showing in, things like that. Try to just make sure all the horses are happy going forward. Um, our horses here at the university are all university owned for the team. They're donated. Uh, we do take in a few lease horses because, to fill holes in uh, specialty areas or if we're getting to, ready to retire somebody, we lease a horse that will fill its uh, spot. The experience that students gain on this program provides a great opportunity for budding equestrians. English judge Regina Antonioli offers some helpful advice. I think two things that they have to remember. First, get the job done. It's no good to sit up there and look pretty if you're not getting done what needs to get done. So concentrate on are you cantering, are you trotting, you know, look at your fence. Really be workmanlike first but never lose sight of the fact that it is a horse show and it is also your responsibility to show off your skill and your talent to the judge. So try to make sure you get in a position in those flat classes where the judge can see how wonderful you really are. 
Regina recognises that students have a distinct challenge with riding strange horses in competition, and the criteria for judging these classes is clearly defined. I'm really looking for the rider that is best communicating with their horse. I'm looking for their equitation in terms of a body position that best facilitates that communication. And the standard is really the same over fences or on the flat. Possibly I'm being a little more critical with an open rider than a very novice rider. But again, looking for them to use their hands and their legs communicating to maintain even pace, find a good distance to the fences, and control their animal in a pleasing, almost as if they're working as one. As an emerging sport, the women's equestrian program at FSU is clearly looking forward to the prospects of becoming a fully-fledged NCAA sport. It allows us to participate in, in NCAA functions it uh, gives us uh, rules to abide by and stay uh, organized with. And we right, right now we have 36 colleges and universities uh, that participate in the NCAA. And if we have four more teams, then we will become uh, on an equal footing with basketball, football, all the other recognized sports. And the NCAA will host our national championship. Right now, we have what we call a varsity equestrian championship at the end of each year. Teams send in their, um, their show record from the IHSA and other things that they do and they create a standings for the country and rate us and then they invite the top uh, part of that to the varsity championships. So uh, currently we're going to go to the varsity equestrian champions, championships in um, Conyers, Georgia uh, in April and uh, we're very excited to make that happen. Uh, just prior to that we're going to host uh, an NCAA format tournament and we have teams coming from all over the nation. We also have some teams coming here from the West Coast that we're trying to encourage uh, to become varsity sports, uh, uh, varsity teams and uh, join the NCAA. Uh, Stanford University is trying to come. Pepperdine's going to have a team. UCLA and USC have all been invited and are working towards uh, coming to our tournament and we're trying to encourage them to uh, join the fold so that we have more West Coast competitors out here. With 17 other sports at FSU, the program is clearly on the brink of changing history, both for women and equestrian sports, to gain recognition at this level. This is an, a really exciting thing for these young people because they can continue their horse riding career here as they uh, complete their education. And it's great for us because we include all levels of riding in the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. So uh, we have the opportunity for walk trot riders and all the way up to the open level riders to come and compete on the team and participate. For the judges, it will also herald the dawn of a new era with NCAA recognition, as Regina observed. Also a great opportunity for equestrian sports. Uh, as you know, it's expensive to own and maintain horses, and many of the young riders that come here may not have had this opportunity on their own. And the fact that the universities can now offer equestrian sports to those that love the animal is just so wonderful it's hard to describe. I think this is one of the best things that we could ever have hoped for. Well we have three winners here today. We have Layla Mundy and Dawn McIntosh and Katie Flanagan. They're all one in the English division. Layla tell us about your win and uh, what this program means to you. Well I won in the novice fences class. I drew a horse that was owned by one of our team members and he was an awesome horse. I had an awesome ride. And this program is geared towards the equine enthusiast that just wants to go out, have a good time, and ride. And I think that's what we've done here today. Great. Well, Dawn, you also won here today. Tell us about your win and, and what this program means to you, because you're, this is not a full-time job for you. You just do this whole, on the <laughs> side. Uh, it seems sometimes that it's a full-time job, to be honest. Um, the team has lots of requirements. Um, but uh, I won an open flat 
and I had a really good draw. The horses here today were really nice, and I was lucky for that. It wasn't really a bad draw, but um, the program means a lot to me. This is my fourth year, and basically, I mean, it unites a bunch of girls that like to ride horses, and it, it recognizes us as a sport, and I really appreciate that. And so I think everyone here today loves horses, loves riding, and it works out really well. So that's what the program means to me. Katie, tell us about your win here today and what that means to you. I won in the novice flat, and I had the same horse Dawn had. It was a really good draw. Um, I was really pleased. Everything, I've been working really hard on my position, and it all kind of came together today, so I was really pleased. And then the win on top of it was great. So. And what um, experience did you have before you started on the program here at Fresno? I've been riding since I was six, and I started out in pony club as a child and moved up into the hunter jumpers in high school, and then I came here. This is my second year. Unlike many other college sports, horses can become an expensive activity with all the accompanying clothing and equipment that's required for horse and rider. Here at Fresno, students are used to sharing amongst themselves whenever necessary to help their teammates. I have my own things because I've grown up riding, but at the same time, if you need something, like I'll loan something to a teammate who needs it. or. Yeah, we all kind of share so everybody gets it and everybody looks nice and you don't have to be able to afford everything. We've had to share a lot of helmets. Um, yeah. They just <laughs> passed a rule where we have to wear an approved uh, safety helmet and before most of us wore unapproved helmets. So that's, the school was really great. I mean, having the, the school provided the helmets for us and so we kind of shared those for a while until we kind of had to buy our own. For the parents of horse crazy daughters, watching them in competition can be both exciting and nerve wracking as Christine Tonello, the mother of Michelle, can attest. And it's always a little nerve-wracking when you don't know the horse, but she always manages to pull it out and is safe, so I'm very happy with that. With the opportunity to further her daughter's riding at college level, Christine is fully supportive of the program here at Fresno. As a parent, it's it's more of a validates what we've been doing all along. We couldn't get a team in high school because they thought it was too dangerous. And it was not, it's really nice for the NCAA to have a sport for women, especially the equestrian, where they can do what they love and show the world how well they can ride on a horse they've never ridden before. But it really validates all the time and effort that she's put in and we've put in as parents um, in the horse show world to show that, yes, they can get the recognition at the collegiate level. While some outsiders consider equestrian sports to be elite, the college program certainly defies that definition, as Christine explained. At the college level, this program starts at walk trot. People who have never shown before, there's one girl out there that showed walk trot today that had never ridden before this year. So if they can start and they borrow the equipment and they go out and they have fun and they do what they can for their team and for themselves, I think you can never call that an elitist sport. Following the success by riders in the English classes, the Fresno team began the Western classes full of confidence as they faced Cal Poly, UC Davis, Nevada, Stanford, the Sierra Nevada College, and the College of the Sequoias. The classes ranged from open rail to reining, which features a pattern of moves. With each class, the judge is looking for riders to meet a certain criteria as Judge Rennie Baker explained. On the rail classes, they like us to pick a rider who can handle any type of horse. Actually, these girls, I would say girls, the adults, young adults riding, um, are not allowed to be on these horses until they walk in the arena. So they don't have any idea what they're on. I'm supposed to find someone that can handle any kind, type of horse and be able to ride them through any problems they may have. Um, whether the horse is behaving well or misbehaving. Um, so horsemanship basically is what I'm looking for and how well a, a young adult can handle any situation they might get into um, equitation wise. And in the reining, I'm looking for basically the same thing but um, I'm supposed to judge most of it on the riders which is kind of difficult because you're so used to it as a combination horse rider. Uh, but we're supposed to really kind of ignore the horses here from what I understand in totally judge the riders on how well they're handling and being able to do the maneuvers that they're supposed to be doing. In the reining they, they have to do circles and they have to do a couple of rollbacks and some stops so it's on how well they handle the, their body um, throughout the whole routine. And if the competition is close in the rail classes the judge can ask riders to perform a pattern. On the rail have um, 
say two or three top writers or even five. If I want to decipher from those five writers, I will have them do a separate pattern. Um, uh, there's different choices I can do. I can have them uh, ride without stirrups, um, do like a figure eight, um, a stop, a back, um, a 360 degree turn either direction, and just see how they handle the horse that they're on and how well they do it um, if I need to make a decision between, like I said, the top five riders. I don't have to have a pattern if I feel that I already have the class placed and everybody is, you know, like a for sure first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, I won't have them do a pattern. But if I need to, um, I have that option. As in the English division, horses are drawn by number and riders have no chance to get to know their horses before they face competition. This is also a challenge for the host team to prepare a selection of horses that will provide a fair playing field for all the teams. It requires good management and careful training, something that falls on Julia Scribani as the barn manager at FSU. She has the job of overseeing the welfare, management and training of almost a hundred horses under the direction of head coach Chuck Smallwood. So how are the horses trained and chosen for the competition? We usually go through a trial process the first week to make sure that they're going to be okay in here in the settings, the present settings, and then we'll also bring in like outside people to ride them in addition to our riders just to make sure they're rideable. And then we'll come here and try to see, and if people can't ride them, then we'll pull them from a class. Sometimes if we have a young green horse, we'll assign it to a specific rider or group of people and they'll take care of that horse for a while and ride it in lessons with Chuck or we'll assign like an older horse who needs maybe tuning up or something to one of our older riders that needs that would just like to tune up but usually in the lessons he'll implement all the training with the riders that you know assign us horses for our lessons that are appropriate to our level team selection is a task that falls on head coach Chuck Smallwood we're very fortunate uh, we can carry uh, up to a hundred on our team and we enjoy that uh, a, a lot of these young ladies uh, are very competitive. Uh, others are um, uh, people just coming into equestrian sport to fill in uh, for the IHSA levels, the lower levels, so they're learning. Uh, so we have a pretty good spread. Organizing these events involves a team of students and staff so that horses are prepared on time and the backstage crew has everything in place. With extensive media coverage to match some of the other college teams, including national and local TV programs, Chuck is delighted that equestrian sport is attracting so much interest. We're excited that this will extend our horse family and uh, parents can keep up with students and uh, uh, people interested in our program, uh, our horse program will be able to uh, see what we actually do, look at the horses. I just think that this is a wonderful opportunity uh, to include more people in what we do. FSU Athletic Director Scott Johnson is also impressed with the growth of the women's equestrian program and is looking forward to it becoming an NCAA sport as well as its impact on the university. Well I think the next step is we have to get more schools to have equestrian teams so we can have an NCAA uh, national championship. Uh, now they compete outside of that because of the uh, uh, not enough number of schools that, that participate in that. But I think what it means is it bonifies the sport, it makes it uh, legitimate in all our other sports. We have 17 other sports. They all have NCAA championships. Equestrian doesn't yet. So we're looking forward to that day. Uh, in the meantime, we'll just keep winning championships like we have been, whether it's sponsored by the NC2A or not. We have probably one of the bi biggest uh, programs in the country with nearly 100 women participating in our team. So it's, uh, it's not a sport that's uh, here locally that uh, is as well known as some of our other sports, but this is a hotbed for, for our horses, though. And so we had a club team before. We started this team and there was a lot of interest and I think it's just, it's grown every year and I think uh, what it means to our program is it's another avenue of interest that we're able to accommodate. I think that's what's important. We're here to give them resources and of course for them to be competitive against other universities and uh, they've been quite successful with it so far. He too feels that the more media coverage the sport gets, the better it will be for everyone involved 
and reflects well on what they are trying to achieve here at FSU. Great interest out there for it. As we mentioned before, this is an agricultural-based valley here, so we know there's already a lot of interest. I think what it does for our program, it obviously gives us a lot of publicity. It shows people that we have a diverse, well-broad-based athletic program, from football to equestrian. And so I think that uh, it's we're, we're serving the Valley and our student-athletes' uh, interests and needs, and that's what our university should be doing. Fresno's runaway success here in the Western classes added to their domination of the English events. The prospects for the team and for the university are exciting as they build on these results and establish women's equestrian as an NCAA sport. One thing is for sure, college sports engender team spirit with students supporting one another at whatever level of competition. Fresno's success characterizes their dedication and determination. By claiming the championship ahead of UC Davis, Fresno secured their lead in regional points and qualified for the zone finals. It's been an exciting competition and students are pumped up as they look forward to their next event. That's all from Fresno this time. Be sure to join us again on Horse TV when we'll be bringing you more action from Fresno State Equestrian Team.